Hello and welcome to Beyond Bots, doing so much more with artificial intelligence in the contact centre. Today we are covering one of the hottest topics in CX at present, the role and potential of AI in the contact centre. Over the course of this session, we are going to talk about how artificial intelligence can be embedded in journeys and service and at the game for customers, agents and operations. Joining me today to discuss this important topic, please welcome Gayathri Krishnamurthy, AVP of Product Marketing at Ring Central. Gayathri, welcome. Thank you, Melanie. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's in a this pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Very excited for this conversation. Um, a quick note for the audience: we have taken an interactive format for this session, which means that after the official questions from me, those who are watching live today have the chance to submit their own questions for Gayathri. You can do this at any time during the session using the Q&A button that you can see at the bottom of your screen. And we will cover as many audience questions as we can towards the end of the session. But for now, Gayathri, I have quite a few questions for you. So let's get started um, because AI is a very broad topic and as a technological development, it is evolving rapidly. So let's set the scene today with a recap of the major CX related developments. What are you seeing in the market for overall CX needs right now? Um, Thanks again, Melanie. And uh, it, this is one of the hottest topics and um, generative AI has been a big phenomenon. Um, in fact, um, I was uh, looking at one of the statistics. It was just amazing. Within a couple of months, um, ChatGPT had about a million users, um, about <laughs> at least like four or five times faster than uh, even TikTok. So it's a big phenomenon. And we know that um, AI is, is kind of um, really happening now across every possible field that we can imagine. And contact center is no exception to this. And uh, what kind of sets the stage for this um, from a macro context is very interesting. If you kind of connect the dots between what's happening um, now from an economy standpoint and, and the AI wave. Um, the way I kind of look at it is now we're at a point where profitability is under the microscope every company is trying to grow but at a at a at a pace where you know um, profitability is not compromised so that kind of brings us to a very interesting aspect about okay how do we get that growth with profitability in mind and that's where i think there's a big power um, from coming from cx um, side of the house so if you look at, um, uh, I wanted to share one very interesting slide, which kind of talks about how, um, you know, it's so much more easier to keep your existing customers. It's so much more cheaper to sell an, to an existing customer. The sales cycles are shorter. Um, the close rates are better. Churn is lower. The wallet share is going to be much more higher with an existing customer. So really, if you look at, what's happening, um, CX is seen as the new growth lever um, and trying to retain customers and trying to sell more into customers has become more important than ever. And now with that um, macro, now the, the stage is gonna set where every company is looking to transform CX and there's always this cost and experience balance that they are trying to do. So now to transform, I need to look at a great experience, but at the same time, I, you know, cost is an issue. So we're trying to balance that. And that's exactly where I feel like the digital and AI revolution is going to really transform contact centers for a great experience at lower costs. So I feel like, like that power of um, AI is so relevant now with cost and experience being important and customer service being much more important today. So that's that's kind of the way I'm looking at the um, larger picture here. I'm sure many people are seeing the same thing that you're seeing. Um, so in light of all this recent activity, what potential does artificial intelligence now bring to the customer experience, specifically contact centers? Sure. Um, and we look at this massive transformation that a lot of companies are trying to do with CX, with, with a lot of potential here. Um, we see at least three big areas where we, we will have digital and AI as a key component. One is on the customer um, side of the house. How can I really give a lot of tools 
for my customers so they can self-serve? How is AI going to be so much more critical for from a customer journey perspective? The second aspect is um, obviously agents, you know, it's um, happy agents make happy customers. So really making sure that we can leverage the power of AI for an agent to be effective, to be productive, to be um, much more um, faster in what they do and, and just taking the tasks that matter to them. So do I need to focus on on the screen in front of me, or do I need to focus on the customer, right? So really trying to help the agent uh, be much more effective so they can spend more time with the customer. And the last aspect um, is obviously there's so many metrics in contact center and having a, an agile operation is so critical. Now with the power of AI, we are at a scale where we can look at large data sets and really make sense out of the customer patterns in terms of churn, in terms of their behavior, in terms of cross sell up sell opportunities. And also from a live um, operation standpoint, how can we really be very quick and agile and have a real time change in operations so that you know, we're able to um, have a much smarter operation. So I think bringing all these components of smartness, so to speak, in the customer side, agent side, and operation side um, would be a great approach to think about how you can uh, look at all the aspects in a contact center and try to see where there, there is a meaningful introduction that we can have for AI and take, um, take value out of it. So that's how I'm kind of looking at that universe of agent, customer, and operations. Okay, okay. Um, can we focus on the customer angle next then? Um, specifically how customers use AI. Um, of course, there are bots. We have plenty of those. Um, but what are the key tools beyond bots that are being used um, to connect with customers? I think that's a great question. Um, and, and bots, we've seen bots in many forms and shapes now. Um, to me, even a knowledge article was like kind of self-serve. Um, tool, but then it's kind of evolved to be much more smarter and smarter and smarter. And on and one aspect of it is bots. So the uh, the way um, kind of looking at this universe for for a customer is um, really trying to think through their whole journey and see how AI and digital can be um, injected in that journey to be meaningful. So uh, I was planning to kind of share one of the slides which can walk through this concept. Um, so if you look at the journey first, what we see is so many options of being much more proactive. Um, I'm gonna build this. Um, so when you are uh, me as, a, as an end customer, you know, we were really not looking at always going to a contact center. So um, there's statistics which show that probably 80 to 90% of the time, customers want to self-serve. They really want, don't want to be in a queue to be, pro, uh, you know, to, to be um, waiting for their turn to get the answer. So if you look at a customer journey in terms of self-serve angle, um, first op opportunity is really an opportunity to be very proactive to customers where you can use AI to send proactive messages Okay, you're looking. You're looking for this product now. There's a, a discount on this. There's a sale on this. Do you want to go buy? There's going to be an outage. Um, we get a lot of proactive notification about outages for from, um, you know, um, uh, power companies. So really being proactive. That's that's again in their journey. If you think about the customers, it's it's so important being proactive and informing them on on the decisions that that they have been thinking about. Second thing is the knowledge management aspect that has really evolved over time. And we're really looking at intent. What is the intent versus like show them 17 different knowledge articles, right? So capturing the intent, showing the right information. Um, that's another use case where we're seeing AI being used. Um, and also when we look at journey for a customer, really taking them to the next step in the journey. So for example, if they're looking at a, a website um, and they're not able to get what they need, then maybe the next elevation path could be um, 
even a bot, or it could be a live agent. So really taking them through a path, a journey, we, we, that's another use case where we see a lot of um, AI being used to kind of capture the journey, the analytics and the intent and move them across the journey. And then once um, second bar that you see is obviously the bots that we have talked about over and over now. Um, and then once the bot fails, I think it's it's another very interesting use case is really, okay, what if the bot fails? How do we have a seamless transition to an agent? So getting that contextual transfer um, is critical. And then lastly, you know, if you have to transfer to a live agent, we see AI being used even in routing. It's a very powerful use case where we're not just routing a person based on um, you know, the skill of the agent. Like, for example, if I have a question on refrigerator and there's a queue for refrigerator questions, it's such a natural thing to think about skills as kind of the foundational thing. But now in, we're evolving where we're matching personalities, matching behaviors of individuals and really trying to think of routing as, okay, who's the best agent in terms of not just the knowledge, but also the characteristics on, on how they can manage a certain type of personality. Or it could even be, you know, the last seven interactions with this person has been extremely successful. Let's match this person. So really going beyond, um, you know, the core skills into like soft skills and a matching personality. So really, if you look at the journey itself, it's kind of evolved over time by injecting AI every step of the way. Your opportunities and possibilities kind of expand um, to a so much larger horizon, as you can see. So that's the way I kind of think that the journeys are going to be really changing now by injecting AI every step of the way. It's really interesting. Um, well, sticking with the people angle, let's look at employees next. Because um, there's a constant dialogue on how AI has the potential to transform like the future of work and even make some roles obsolete. Um, what does the use of artificial intelligence in the contact center mean for agent skill development? You know, it's interesting. You talk about um, replacing agents. I feel um, uh, it's, 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 it's not the AI who is the competitor, it's the person with the AI who is going to be the competitor for you uh, in terms of job, right? So, um, and uh, Gartner has come up with a really interesting concept with they call the connected uh, rep. So really giving your agents everything that they need, context, guidance, as they solve a problem with a customer. Really, it's not just about the um, customer effort, it's also about the agent effort how to be much more consistent, um, um, how can we train them better, how can we coach them better, right? Um, similar to kind of um, how we looked at the journey of um, a customer, you know, I wanted to take a parallel approach and, and kind of walk through some of the use cases where we see from an agent journey, right? Um, from an agent journey, I think, you know, before interaction, at the interaction with the customer, post interaction, how can bots or AI be buddies to agents? Um, so uh, that's that's more like a co-pilot concept of 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 um, you know how can I make make the life of an agent easy? So from a from a pre-journey perspective, we've had a lot of insights about the customer come from uh, CRM systems, getting a pulse on um, customer um, journeys and so on and so forth. Where we see more of um, the AI coming into place is as a customer has conversation with bots, getting that insights through a bot and um, how a bot is able to elevate and provide much more context to a call that's coming and um, hitting an agent. I think that's that's a lot of use cases there. Um, and within the call, um, we really see a couple of areas which are emerging as very um, strong use cases. One is in, in a conversation, how can we really guide an agent, pull up the right knowledge article or um, show them the next best action 
or show them a checklist of things that they have to ask before a customer conversation ends, really guiding them within the moment. And also um, live coaching really in terms of um, behavioral coaching. So uh, for example, if you and I are having a conversation, uh, we, we have real-time interaction guidance where you know, based on your, um, you as a customer, you know, are you, are you angry at this moment? You know, what are the kind of words they are using? What's the tone? What's the sentiment? So really getting that pulse and then saying, hey, maybe you can be much more empathetic to this customer or whatever it is. So really coaching them as they are talking to a customer in terms of providing some insights. Oh, maybe you can slow down because you're going too fast. So, or that, you know, we, we sense a, uh, uh, attention with a customer, maybe you can be much more empathetic, right? Really being that coach in the moment. I think it's a very interesting use case and we're starting to see a lot of that. Um, and post-call interaction is huge because, um, you know, uh, one thing is to look at multiple desktops for an agent, which keeps growing, uh, which we're trying to consolidate. The other thing is, uh, okay, I'm done with this interaction, how do I, you know, update multiple systems? How can you have like a quick transcript? Um, you know, um, and, and, and for example, some of the um, generative AI tools have been really powerful here. Um, while a customer is having a conversation, maybe you can have answers that a bot can fill in for you basically during interaction that you can use. Similarly, post-interaction generative AI can generate a transcription and update systems. So a lot of uh, powerful use cases, as you can see along the journey for an agent too. Um, I feel like there's so much uh, there for all of us to kind of look into. <laughs> very much. Um, in fact, it's such an interesting topic. I'm going to break the flow a little bit now um, and jump to an audience question that's just come in because it's incredibly relevant to this point. Um, so Pamela Rubio has asked, do you see artificial intelligence replacing many customer facing roles? Oh, yeah, I think I answered this question, right? It's more like yeah. the AI that's going to replace the job. No, it's a person with AI. I feel um, definitely you know, the, the role of AI is to make um, some of the, these roles much more effective. Um, well, well, to be honest, there could be a few, <laughs> few efficiencies that could be built that, uh, but, but at the end of the day, I think if you net it out, um, it's more about AI being a very powerful companion and a buddy to help um, in a customer facing role. That's that's where we really see um, this wave evolve because it, you still need that human interaction. And what we're seeing is like the number of interactions is just you know, exploding because of the opportunity that the number of channels which are being opened up, 30s and 40s of channels that have been opened up, digital channels. So the conversation volume is just exploding. So you kind of need a gatekeeper, so to speak. So, so that's the balance now with the volume soaring up so high, I think the AI is going to kind of automate to some extent and also be a buddy to make it more efficient. So I would rather see uh, um, look at it from that equation of the volume and how do you balance that and how do you be much more effective um, versus replacing jobs. Okay, excellent. Um, for those people who are watching live today, if you have a question for the R3, um, do post it in the Q&A chat and we will come to it at the end of the session. Um, but if we can just unpick that volume part now, Gaya 3 um, because we're talking there about more interactions, um, obviously all of this generates more data um, and there is a huge data angle to this story too. Um, obviously there are changes on the horizon for third party data um, and this means that organizations need to collect and act on relevant first party data um, so what role can artificial intelligence play here? And how do you believe contact centers can use customer data from all these channels that we have now for their operations? Yeah, I think um, we're going to get very savvy. We got, you know, it's all about proactively leveraging and uh, getting those insights 
at scale. Like if you think about the contact center, it's a gold mine with a lot of data across channels, across customers, across their journey. So really um, running some of these predictive models on churn, on, on um, upsell opportunities, um, really, I think that's where you can look at it as a growth lever um, for for mining that um, that large reams and reams of data. Um, so uh, I, I feel like you know there's there's opportunity there from a customer data uh, standpoint. You know how you can how can how you can get um, you know if you're looking for that needle in the haystack moment, uh, you know this is going to be possible now with the power of AI. Fantastic. Exciting times on the horizon. Um, well, to conclude today, um, how should organizations respond to the increased use of AI in the contact center? Yeah, um, and, and I think specifically on the operation side, um, you know, we talked about the customer side, we talked about the agent side, maybe um, I want to kind of wrap it up with one more perspective from the operations um, side of the house. Um, yeah, so let me share a screen here um you know uh the big power of data um and you know a couple of ways of looking at data one is obviously looking at real-time data and i think this is where a lot of um new use cases are being unlocked with the power of ai um getting real-time insights into what's happening in your operations and an ability to make those changes so if you're seeing spikes in certain channels, how can you kind of move, um, you know, um, your your cus uh, customers into different queues, or how can you add more agents? So really looking at that real time operation, being so agile and nimble, um, and scheduling, um, it's become much more complex now with hybrid agents everywhere, um, agents across the globe. So really looking at schedules to be like. You know, little micro-sized, <laughs> if you will, um, uh, and trying to use the power of intelligence in terms of, um, you know, matching your demand and supply for, for from a scheduling perspective, from a workforce management, um, anticipating calls in certain channels, um, and and the last one, of course, is um, we talked about real-time coaching, real-time monitoring. How can we flag a few things? Um, right in the moment for a supervisor to kind of barge in versus like look for a data um, after the fact, right? So, um, and and um, we want to fix a problem now <laughs> versus look at data says, to say, yeah, of course we had a problem, right? So I think a lot of power in real time. Um, and um, also what we're seeing is post interaction, how can we use AI um, as, uh, as a key lever to look at uh, automation, to look at opportunities, um, trends that you can uh, that you can uh, see from the data, right? Conversational intelligence obviously is one of the big topics that we've been hear hearing a lot about in terms of the in understanding the intent and really understanding the conversation and, and um, how can you, um, automate stuff, for example, coaching, auto scoring, scoring at scale, um, and identifying some of the trends that are bubbling up. Okay, a lot of people are asking the same question. Is there a way we can, um, you know, surface that and maybe put a self-service um, mechanism for them, for them to get that answer directly, right? So um, I, an opportunity to identify um, self-serve um, situations, churn, improve CSAT, improve NPS, um, improve cross-sell, upsell. So a lot that we can get from a conversation, post-conversation, the ability to mine that data. So um, I think, you know, to wrap up on the question that you had around, um, uh, you know, where do you um, see the power of AI? Um, I think it's in, in leveraging AI for the customer side of the house, agent side of the house, operation side of the house, can I have a 360 view on 
where are the right use cases? Which ones would really make the best sense for the company at that moment, right? So some of these use cases could be very sophisticated, like it's not relevant to the organization. And if you look at the evolution of technologies, um, generative AI um, is, is passive. Uh, you know, people are trying to solve almost every problem asking asking a question to chat GPT. Uh, so um, the power comes in actually if organizations have invested in um, um, conversational AI, um, which is kind of the previous wave versus generative AI, which is looking at data um, from the open internet. So there's a magic that can be made by bringing the two together. Um, good use case that we talked about is, okay, now I am talking to a customer, I'm an agent, um, you know, can we have a canned answer based on the context um, of what the customer is asking, which is a um, bit of the conversational AI in play, but at the same time, the generative AI can completely generate a full paragraph that an agent can probably use um, and send it over to a customer. So really, um, the power comes when we can merge the two uh, big AI concepts that we see now. And uh, there are a lot of companies um, doing that as well um, now. So, and, and of course, every every single contact center vendor out there has chat GPT enabled, bots enabled agent assist. So I think that's a, it's a quick uh, win to kind of amplify the power of AI um, now with generative AI. So really looking for that right use case, looking for that right situation to apply with the tools that you have and getting that value. That's that's where I think we, we, we are seeing the next wave of like people are seeing the value of AI. It's they are really, really adopted. We are seeing um, appetite in the market. Now it's for them to kind of unearth the right use cases, look at the right models um, with the investments that they have made, train the model sufficiently, um, less on hallucinations. Um, I, I, I wanted to just talk about one um, interesting um, uh, example of hallucinations in AI models. Um, my niece was do doing some research on zootropic uh, diseases and you know, trying to get some papers. Uh, you know, it was like, I got to find all the papers, research papers. And we're like, okay, let's go ask chat GPT. <laughs> so, and um, we got a lot of uh, responses and they were all not real. So, so you know, sometimes we, we, we can't trust everything with, <laughs> with a model which is trained on open internet. So hallucinations are common. Um, so having a model which is um, much more, data and uh, I mean and privacy and security, making sure that you have those um, data addressed um, in in um, in uh, making sure those security aspects are layered in, um, taking into account that there are hallucinations, taking into account the bias of the model. Uh, for example, if you're scoring and if there's a model, then you know there's a bias in scoring, then it's going to have a massive <laughs> negative impact. So really, all of these are very important things to watch out for. So um, like any tool, there's pros and cons and there's, you know, we always look at the cons and, uh, I mean, sorry, look at the pros and address the cons uh, so we can we can um, leverage the technology. So um, long answer, but <laughs> I feel like, you know, the power, uh, you know, it, AI is really here. There's no longer the question of, is it here? Um, and it's, it's a question of adoption. It's a question of, um, making sure that it's um, effective for the organizations. So that's where uh, you know we're seeing the future here. Excellent, thank you so much, Gayathri. Um, I think we have about 30 seconds left and there is just one more audience question that I think the other people who are logged on today will really want to hear the answer to. Um, and that is, we've talked about CX, EX and operations, but where should we start investing first? I think that's a great yeah, question. Yeah, it's a big, quick question for a quick answer, but. <laughs> um, I think um, it really depends on where the uh, where the company is. Chatbots are so easy. And, and again, if, if we're looking at managing the volume of interactions, obviously chatbot is like a quick fix. 
um, of, 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 of taking the volume down um, on the customer side. And, and, and if there are issues on ESAT or CSAT, or if there are issues on NPS and all of those, I think those are trigger points to kind of see, oh, okay, if there's an ESAT issue, can we help the uh, agent? If there's an issue with churn, can we put some something on the operation side to fine tune it? Um, if there are issues with CSAT, maybe 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 it's not the time for bots, but helping them with something proactively, like proactive guidance, knowledge based, um, intent based knowledge that we can feed. So really looking at where the failure points are um, in your organization and trying to remediate that. Um, so that would be a way I, I would approach. Excellent. Thank you so much, Gathri. Um, thank you for joining us today and for sharing all that expertise. And huge thanks to everybody who joined us live. Thank you so much again for the opportunity. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.